you know, one of the early success stories, really, uh, had a slight stumble. But, you know, make no mistake, this is a resilient market. Let's get insights into the market from Tran Trong Kien, founder, chairman and CEO of TMG Group Vietnam. Hi, Kian. How are you? Hi, Hi Kian. Doing. Hi, how are you? I'm doing Are good. you still in Hanoi? Yeah, I'm in Hanoi, in the hotel, <laughs> yeah. In the hotel, that's great. So let's get to know you personally first, right? So you were a medical student and you started running local tours to fund your studies. Uh, was that right? And then you set up Buffalo Tours in 1994. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. In 1994, um, Vietnam was just opening to the world. And I was in my final years at the Hanoi Medical University. So this, um, for those who are not sure, this is founded in um, 1902, 118 years ago, and the, by the French. So I started as a tour guide, um, at the guiding French tourists around, uh, and I'm really enjoying it. So I thought this was a great opportunity to um, to open a travel company so my friend can come and work as well. So we opened Buffalo Tours and that's where the reason I started this small office and this is how the Hoon TMG was started. Uh, well, you know, actually that's the power of travel because, you know, somebody else like Jack Ma, right? He started as a tour guide in Hangzhou and, and look what he built, right? Uh, and you've, you've built a uh, you know, quite a you know big empire in Vietnam as well. So I, uh, you have uh, TMG has hospitality, it has IVVU, it has uh, destination management, and it has also aviation, right? You know, so so tell us about the trends that uh, have happened in Vietnam during this this period, in, in during this COVID period. Um, it's uh, it's very interesting because um, people may know that Vietnam were kind of a country with a very very early success. We were the first country with actually have a border with China and then very, very much early in February, we were um, having still uh, hundreds of thousands of Chinese tourists in the country. And um, um, but we see one of the first country in the world actually have uh, started this very quick um, closing the borders and also tracking and, and, and testing and also one of the first local arm as well. And um, it's, it was a, a very, very much one of the first country in the region we have um, uh, managed to contain the, the, the outbreak. Um, but for travel, it was a big, a big shock because Vietnam enjoyed one of the biggest months in January when the country for the history uh, having more than um, 2 million international visitors is close to about uh, 4 and 5 million of domestic travelers. But then so we go to a big shock with Moving to Lockdown period in April, uh, we have no traveler at all. Uh, domestic travel was so haunted to zero percent, and international travel was just a couple of people um, who, a couple of percent who actually got stuck in the country. But um, it's a recovering world was really, really uh, great. So after we have managed to contain the outbreak in uh, the end of April, uh, we can send that the demands were, were especially for those who in the lockdown to travel again, um, uh, coming back at the end of April. And we're seeing that from the first week of May, for the May holiday days, we saw uh, again hundreds of thousands of people actually leaving their home and cities and travel to the neighboring nearing. And that's that trend continue all the way until the end of July, where we saw that demand in domestic travel were yeah. almost 120% compared to the same period last year. At DMG, it was the same story. All of our businesses, from the online travel to hotel businesses, to our destination management and, and, and our cruises, um, domestic um, regional river cruises, are all actually full over the uh, weekends and also doing 50-60% right. of domestic so, so, but what, yeah. what is the What is the situation now? Because you had a stumble, right? You know, and then that sort of fell off. Where are you now? I, 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 it's, uh, you know, uh, is uh, domestic travel picking up again? Are people a um, bit more confident? At the end of July, this um, this out uh, this, uh, this again another outbreak um, with uh, started in Da Nang and is spread out to a few provinces. But Vietnam have uh, again did exactly what we did before. 
uh, we're very, very aggressive in, 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 in tracking testings and be able to to, to basically quarantine a certain area, lockdown, certain city. But this time we did a bit better. We actually, instead of lockdown the entire country, we actually uh, deciding where to lockdown and keep it um, a, a very good job in, in quarantine people coming from different places to ramp up testing and be able to tracing. And at, for now, I think for almost 24 days, we have no new cases um, in, in, in the community spread. All, all the new cases were actually import cases. We continue having this quarantine um, for those coming from other countries, although we are looking at uh, reducing the quarantine days for certain country, also talking about travel bubble. And domestically, I think people are getting a lot more confident to travel, although not the same level as July yet. So I think we probably be about 60% of the last year in terms of domestic travel, but the, 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 the confidence coming back. Uh, we also seeing that people are actually acting reasonably as well. Uh, people are still going out, uh, yeah. people are actually wearing masks, people are actually uh, increasing hand sanitizing, people are actually paying uh, attention to, to, to other factors. That yeah, we know. I, guess, I, I guess, you know, people took lessons and, uh, you know, this is, this is, this is uh, very positive. But, you know, this trend towards, uh, you know, now mm -hmm. online behavior, right? So clearly you're seeing a, a rise in online uh, behavior in Vietnam as well. So I'm going to go to an audience poll now and going to ask the audience whether they think that this period actually will give local players an advantage against the foreign OTAs who are coming into your market. Like, you know, for example, Traveloka was coming into Vietnam, right? So, um, you know, do you feel that it gives local players like yourself an advantage right now because you are very much into domestic and then you are into the online? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it it does uh, serve um, the domestic client better for three reasons. I think one, how we handle the first wave of COVID and cancellation. I think with uh, being the, having our presence here with offices in five cities and our own call center speaking Vietnamese, we have managed to handle it much better than anyone else from our other countries. And um, and the second point is to be able to be a lot more quicker in terms of coming out with a relevant product and services um, and I think we come out with almost like 1500 new products that are more switchable to the Vietnamese market right in April when it's during a lockdown and the third thing is continue to be able to connect with the, with the people and the communities why I think a lot of our, 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 our competitors or um, our other friends could not do it uh, I think this is giving a, a massive the, uh, advantage so our target is about 20% of market share, of online market share by 2023. We achieved that um, just at the end of July. Oh, okay. So accelerated. So it's interesting too, because you were very much also focused on sort of the inbound market, right? You know, TMG was very much focused on the inbound market. And you then clearly had to move completely to a domestic model as well. Uh, and so in terms of pricing, how much lower did you have to go? Because the local market is very different from the inbound market that was coming into Vietnam. It's very interesting. I think this is a good question. I think for the third wave uh, uh, and after the recovering, uh, we actually have quite disciplined in terms of pricing. We, we decided that we're not going down more than 25% and we've proven to be the right, uh, a right uh, approach. But I think the biggest thing we do uh, our marketing uh, in, in service, we have um, been tracking very, very, very well our, our, our score was 94, and our industry over here was about 86. And we continue tracking that uh, 94. In fact, for months of July, for example, we even tracking at, at 95. So uh, across the board, we had to train a lot thing to to meet the demand of the market. And the biggest thing would be, a say, food, for example. Yeah, we become a lot more authentic in the way we, we cook. We're actually making sure that we actually <laughs> cook everything in the day. So a small thing like that make make a big difference. Right, because local travelers are much more demanding about the, you know, the food that they get, the authenticity of their, their local food, right? So, so Ken, you know, when, when inbound travelers can come back to Vietnam again, which I hope will be soon, but maybe not this year, but do you think that you will maintain your, your thrust into the domestic market or will you, you know, go back to focusing on the inbound market? We surely would be staying with our Vietnamese market. I think for this crisis, one thing we learned was to, to be able to 
diversify and be able to look at the entire business a bit a bit deeper as well. So I think self sustains um, be able to look at domestic mechanics serving uh, a lot more. Uh, we will certainly be staying uh, in this domestic market for long, and, and I think we're enjoying it. I, I think we have just have a, a, a survival and an opportunity conference just last week, and the four pillar we have were obviously for survival costs, but the most important were new incomes from domestic market, trying every different thing and be able to push harder. And I think we, we should be able to, 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 to go much further. And then the, um, the engagement with communities and the ability to, 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 to maintain and make loyalty um, in customer out of this current outbreak. Right. But, you know, having said that, I mean, the domestic market in Vietnam is not that big, right? I mean, most, I mean, the, the tourism is very dependent on inbound tourism. And you are chairman of the Vietnam Tourism Board, right? Uh, so, you know, what, what lessons are you sharing with other countries on opening borders? Are, 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 you know, are there any conversations at a high level about opening borders for Vietnam? Uh, the first thing I would not say that Vietnam domestic market is small. We're talking about um, a market that is about 90 million travelers. And then we start talking about the people who would otherwise travel overseas and now about we're talking about 20 million of them would be traveling within Vietnam as well. So we were talking about 15 to 20, up to 20 billion if we actually have maintained to have a GDP growth this year. I think Vietnam probably one of the few countries could continue having a GDP growth. So it's that we're going to have a, a bit of the buying power. So what Vietnam would be doing right now, I think we, we know that uh, we were going to come back um, with international uh, travel. I think Vietnam is uh, very much welcoming and the country will be opening. Uh, ultimately, we would, something we learned from this um, is that we had to be able to use resources um, and allocating resources correctly and be able to aggressively uh, taking actions and a lot more discipline than other people. And I'm sure there will be better days when both are open. But uh, I think Vietnam will be opening in stages. I think further war, we will be looking at uh, safe country in the region. There were discussions at Manson, some people in, early on talking about discussions with South Korea, Japan, uh, Taiwan, um, some part in China, I think in the region as well. And we're talking about a, a, a shorter uh, quarantine or perhaps initially talking about taking more investors and people who need to travel for work and then uh, on a special arrangement, and then looking at about testing before travel, testing on arrivals, and be able to to go into certain area, uh, resort area for five days before they can freely to travel. Um, Antibiotics it would be difficult to travel without uh, a vaccine. So I, I think we're probably looking forward to probably a stage when we can uh, uh, getting easier to get to other country. Um, it's very difficult to predict the future. Nobody can do it, but I, I, I think it will better days ahead. And I think uh, we would need to be very, very um, agile. And Vietnam would be prepared and always prepared to welcome guests um, um, in, in the future on a safe for both our travelers and the communities. Yeah, I mean, Ken, let's go back to the the beginning, which is uh, you you were uh, you studied medicine, right? So do you wish that you had stayed in medicine now? Because, you know, that's definitely having more growth than travel right now. <laughs> I, I, um, a lot of my doctor friends were very, very loved and, uh, and respected during this um, COVID-19 period. I think they were obviously, they are the heroes. They are the ones in the front line. And they love totally. and support Vietnam and, and other countries in the world as well. Uh, and, and we need smart people there. But I do believe that travel and tourism is important. And I think we'll, it, at the moment, maybe it's less so because it's over all the trouble we have. But I think look at all industries. The very few industries is not affected. And I think travel and tourism coming back. It is a big industry and it needs smart people. So I answer the question. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be running the travel business. I got 3,000 people we're taking care of. And I'm, I'm one of the few, we are one of the few companies that we don't have to lay off too many uh, at this point in time. And we know that we get through that aside. And I think we need smart and uh, agility, speed, and, and energy. And I think I'm um, kind of feeling good about it. Thank you, Kian. I mean, you know, thank you for those positive words. And definitely, uh, you know, with people like you to lead, uh, you know, the industry in Vietnam, here's more power to you. So thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Stay safe in Hanoi. Thank you very much, Kian. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.
Bye.